Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to compare the TP-Link Deco X60 to the TP-Link Deco X90. So we're going to go into specs. I'm going to tell you guys speed tests and different configurations. I did some range tests as well. And I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts. I got the 2-pack and that one retails for $269. And all the product links will be in the description below if you guys are interested. So... This one is often on sale. In fact, I bought it on sale, but I'll tell you guys again, the retail price is $269. This one just came out. This one's also very recent as well, but the Deco X90 just came out and retails for $549, which is essentially a little over double the price. Now, is this twice as good as the Deco X60? Well, we're here to find out. Specs wise, two Deco X60s basically as a pair and everything I say is basically as a pair but this one is rated for as a pair is rated for 5,000 square feet of coverage where the Deco X90 is rated for 6,000 square feet of coverage as a pair this is a dual band system where the X90 is a tri band system they both have two auto sensing ethernet ports the Deco X90 can support internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits per second. This one cannot. I believe this one maxes out at 1 gig per second. Gigabit. This one has a speed rating of AX3000. Again, that's because it's a dual band. And this one has a speed rating much faster at AX6600. And that's thanks to its tri-band. I use the iPhone 12 Pro for my Wi-Fi 6 device and I use the Pixel 5 for my Wi-Fi 5 device. Now, because these are mesh Wi-Fi's, you have different ways of connecting them, and I go through that with different options. Now, those options I'm going to keep consistent with all my other mesh Wi-Fi videos. That way, if you watch this one or if you've seen another one, and I'm talking about, let's just say, option four, which is wireless backhaul, if you come to this one or if you go to another one, it means the same thing. So I'm going to keep that consistent. But as a result of keeping it consistent, I'm going to skip option number two. Okay, so basically, you know, just because these this is a mesh Wi-Fi system doesn't actually mean you need to use more than one. You could actually just use one of the routers, which technically no longer becomes a mesh Wi-Fi system. Now it just becomes a regular router. But you can use it by itself. You basically hook, hook up any one of these ports to your modem and then you're free to use the other one. If you need more ports, hook it up to a switch and expands your ports. So in this configuration, you get full speeds. The same is true for the X90. Hook up any one of these you want, you know, to your modem and then you're free to use the other one and you get full speeds with this as well. So uh, skipping option two, because option two is when I have a router and a non-router, like an access point or an extender or a satellite, uh, that's what I use for option two. But since, I, since these are both routers, I'm gonna skip to option three. Now option three is when you get two routers and you hook them up to each other via ethernet, which is called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. And this gives you the best possible connection. Now, in this case, and if you're wondering, hey, can I put a switch in between? Yes, you can do that. In this case, I got full speeds on the secondary one, which even though these are both routers, the secondary one is actually acting as an access point, and the TP-Link Deco app is automatically doing that for you. And the same is true for the X90. Same thing, hook these up to each other via Ethernet and got full speeds, no matter which one I was connected to. Granted, in any of the configurations, if you're hooked up, if you get close to the main one, you always get full speeds because that one is hooked up via Ethernet to your modem. Okay, option four is when you get two or more routers and you hook them up to each other wirelessly. Now, in this configuration, dual bands usually don't do as well as tri bands because they don't have a dedicated band for the wireless channel. So they're wireless. Basically, the way this guy's connecting, you know, this router's connecting to the main one, and when I say router, I mean acting as an access point, connecting to the router that's acting as a router, is being shared with your other Wi-Fi devices. So every time you hook, you connect a Wi-Fi device 
to your mesh system, it's actually sharing speeds with all your other Wi-Fi devices. So that's something important to keep in mind. So as a result, typically on the secondary one, you don't get full speeds. And in this case, you could see that we're not getting full speeds. Now with the tri-band, because it has the dedicated wireless band, you know, you're going to see better speeds. And that's why we see that here. You do see better speeds. However, I'm kind of surprised that I didn't get full speeds with my internet speeds. Now, if I had gigabit, I would have probably understand why I'm not getting that. But with my internet speeds, I feel like I should have got sp full speeds. The reason why I say that is because with the Orbi and the Eero Pro 6, you, you pretty much get full speeds. W which one you're connecting to, it doesn't really matter. But with this one, you don't. And it was a little bit slower. It wasn't terrible. And again, this is all usable, right? If you're watching Netflix and YouTube, with these speeds, the 395 down and the 298 down, depending on your device, they're fine. It's completely fine. But doing speed tests, I was kind of surprised it didn't max out on the secondary one. So, yeah, I was I was kind of let down a little bit on the tri-band version. Especially at its price. Because honestly, and the reason why I said Eero Pro 6 and Orbi is because they both cost less than this. And they both maxed out on the Wi-Fi 6 device. On the Wi-Fi 5 device, the Orbi maxed out. The Eero Pro 6 almost maxed out. Now, in terms of range tests. Well, can it make up in terms of range tests with this? Like for, again, double, pretty much double the price. Well, at 20 feet away, they were both pretty much maxed out. At 50 feet away, that's when you see a big difference between the two, between the speeds. And as the distance increases, pretty much the speeds really vary a lot. And that's where the X90 is starting to shine. And the X90 obviously also goes further away. This is actually the mesh Wi-Fi system that I've tested that has gone the furthest to date. So very impressed with the range on this thing. But it really comes down to, is it worth it? Is it worth the price? Because the app itself is pretty much the same app. I mean, it is the same app. And, you know, your settings are pretty much the same. So, you know, what are you really getting for this that you're not getting with this? I will say that on the Deco app, when I had when I was using this, they did offer a subscription for the Home Shield Pro which gives you additional parental controls and additional options where I did not see it for the Deco X60, but I'm, I'm not really a fan of paying subscription fees for something like this. So final thoughts, you know, what's worth getting and why? Well, it really depends on your situation. If you're gonna use wired backhaul, if you're gonna do option three, and you don't need super range, cause this one still gives you pretty good range, then I would say pretty much more than half the price and I would go with the Deco X60. But if range is of the utmost importance to you, then I would go with the Deco X90. But I mean, is it worth twice the price? Unless your internet speeds are faster than gigabit, then yeah, I would go with this uh, between these two. But yeah, I'm not, I was, I was honestly expecting more from the Deco X90. And I feel like there are better alternatives if you're looking for tri-band. This is a good mesh Wi-Fi system. I just feel like it's overpriced. I, I, that's really my biggest gripe with this thing because for the price, I was honestly expecting a lot. And for range, it definitely delivered. But for wireless backhaul, it left, it left me wanting more. But at the same time, because this just came out, I feel like there's still firmware updates that they could release that could possibly improve that. But as of now, it's, I mean, the firmware is up to date and it's not there yet. So as far as deal, I think you're getting a better deal with the X60 versus the X90. I, I don't think it's worth twice the price, but yeah, that's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. If you guys have any questions or comments, 
please leave in the comment sections below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you to all my current subscribers.